Yo, what's up? This is your girl Jagan, and it's time for another Fortnite creative tutorial. Today we're going to be jumping into a quick tip. I'm going to show you how to send fail and success events with the player counter. If you guys do enjoy videos like these, please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And if you do, you are awesome. Thank you so much. All right, this video is going to be a really good one, and I hope you find it beneficial. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's go. All right, welcome. Let me go ahead and show you guys what we're gonna be building today. This is a system in which the player counter will send an event when a count fails and send an event when a count succeeds. This is perfect for, let's say, if you have one player in the map and you want them to go to a specific location to keep them entertained while they wait for more players. In addition to that, once there's enough players in the map, then you can send an event so they can go to another area to start the game. So let me show you what's going on here. I have a timer that is counting down and every 10 seconds it's comparing to target. If there's one player in the zone, the count will fail. That's why it's red. and when it fails in one second here, it's gonna teleport me to a specific area. Now, if two players go into the zone, you see we have a successful count and nothing's going to happen. The players will go nowhere or you can change that event to let's say teleport them to another area or have something else happen. So let me show you how I set this up. Let's do it. All right, to set this up, you're going to need a player counter and I'm using a timer to compare to target every 10 seconds. I'll also show you how to implement this without the timer if you don't wanna use it. However, I do think it's a great buffer to have so that things aren't happening just at the spur of the moment. It allows you to produce a more structured uh, game flow whenever you use a timer as a buffer. For your player counter, you want to use these settings. We're going to compare player count equal or more to two players or whatever your target player count is. We want to ensure that we're gonna transmit on player counted and removed for signal only. And this is because we're using a timer. We're gonna transmit for on compare result change for random counted player and so forth. All right, for functions, we're gonna compare players to target when receiving from the player counter on player counted and then timer device on success. Now I have two here because when we go ahead and remove the timer, we're gonna to compare to target when the player counter is counted. So just to let you know that. We're gonna enable when receiving from the player spawner when the player is spawned and you can choose Usually the, the team one player spawner when the first player spawns into the map, that would be the best one to use. For events, we're going to send an event when the count succeeds to the HUD message device to show that there's two players in the game and nothing's gonna happen. This is the place where you want to place an event in case you do want something to happen. When the count fails and there's only one player in the game, we're going to teleport that player to a specific location. And again, when we're not using the timer, every time a player is counted, we're going to send an event to player counter to compare players to target. And we'll need to make a few more adjustments in which I will show you that here in a minute. For the timer, this is what I have. I have it set to a duration every 10 seconds and it's counting down and it starts at game start. 
And we'll restart and continue the loop with checking and comparing to target. There are no functions. And for events on success, we're going to send an event to the player counter to compare players to target. And that's it. Now the teleporter should already be binded, but I'll go ahead and show you. functions we're going to teleport when receiving from player counter when the count fails and this should just be player counter two because that's the one that i'm using for this tutorial and there's no events so you can see here that's player counter two and if you want to implement hunt messages you can this is just so i can ensure that my events are being sent correctly I have it to send two players are in the zone when receiving from player counter on count succeeds. And this one is set to say one player in zone when the count fails. Um, however, the player is teleported, we don't quite see that one. Now, if you don't want to use the timer, let me show you the adjustments you need to make. First, let's turn the timer off. That way it does not start on game start. Next, we need to remove the timer from the player counter device. So compare players to target when receiving from timer device two on success. Go ahead and remove that. And leave everything else the same. Next, we need to change this from signal only to every time. Compare on count change to yes. And that's it. Now, when we run the test, you're gonna see that there's gonna be no timer buffer. And as soon as a player goes into the zone, it's going to teleport, just like that. And that's the same for player two. It's going to automatically teleport them because there needs to be two players in the zone for the count to succeed for nothing to happen. Now extending the zone will allow you some flexibility. However, I do like to use and work with the zones themselves. Now, if you extend the zone and take off the zone, it's going to count all the players on the island. And you see the count succeeds because it's counting everyone here and there's two players. If the game starts, nothing will happen because I don't have an event attached to a successful, a successful call out or event. So you see two players in a zone, no one is teleported because the count has succeed. Now, let's go ahead and turn this back to a zone. And let's go ahead and put the timer back. And let's go ahead and send the players to another area. Let's make it here and let's change the color so we can know it's a different area.
let's go ahead and change that to when the count succeeds. Making this area a teleport area when the count fails and this area an area when the count succeeds. And just a quick tip, since we're going to be teleporting players when the count succeeds, you want to make sure that you transmit for on compare result change for all. All right, let's run that test. All right, so count fails because there's only one player in the zone. And they are teleported to the one player area. Next, we have two people in the zone and we have a successful count. Now we're both in the correct area. Pretty cool. Yo, what you think? Pretty beneficial, right? You can use this for so many things. I do hope you guys get a chance to experiment with it. And if you do, let me know in the comments below. If you're feeling so kind, be sure to drop some support my way. My creator code's right there on the screen. If you do, I really appreciate you. All right, you guys, that's gonna do it for this video and I'll see you on the next one. All right, bye.